Well, kind of the same answer to the first one with respect to the undedicated funding. I mean, as you're aware, in the state budget, the two biggest, they, well, the single biggest thing that is not protected at all is higher ed. The SAVE bill we passed this year, while it was a little funny, did actually protect a, a higher education to some extent. Um, but we are going to need to, and, and I'm not really advocating uh, constitutionally dedicated funds for higher ed. I'm, I'm advocating undedicating other funds so that we have a little more freedom to, uh, to spread that out. If you look at a lot of the cuts, in fact, the vast majority of the cuts to higher ed over the last several years weren't necessarily in the budget that was passed by the legislature. They came as a result of the mid-year cuts or the end-of-the-year cuts, which the governor did after we were not there. Because essentially what he did was he put funding dedicated to higher ed that didn't really exist or that didn't materialize. So when the, the one-time money or the contingency money is dedicated to higher ed, and it doesn't actually pan out, then the cuts come off of higher ed. And that was one of the things that this governor did every year, was kind of use higher ed as a, as a threat. If you don't pass the budget, then the first dollar cut's going to come from higher ed. Um, I don't like the idea of using higher ed as a bargaining chip. It should be the first thing we fund, not the last thing we fund. Um, and we, I, I, that, that's one area where I strongly disagreed with this governor over the last five years that I was there. I think only one of the five years did we actually not have a big fight over higher ed funding. Um, the, uh, the money is there, I believe, if we can undedicate the funding to so many, basically everything else. If you can undedicate that, then when you're, when you're looking at a, you know, you need $400 million for higher ed. Well, if your $400 million comes out of a $1 billion pot, that's 40%, and you're looking at a rather significant cut to higher ed if you're, if you're talking about you know, straight, up, straight across the top. But if you can undedicate the rest of that fund and, and everything else that they have in there, then 4% off the top to make up that gap is not that big a deal. And so I think, and, and again, the problem with undedicating funds is the people who are benefiting from the dedication really, really want it to stay dedicated. The problem that we're going to have in passing that is telling people just because we're undedicating it doesn't mean we're not going to fund it. We're just going to, it, we're going to have to fund it through House Bill 1, and it's going to have to be voted on every year as opposed to just being dedicated directly. That's the, politically, that's the biggest problem with undedicating funds. But to, to fully fund higher ed and to protect higher ed, we're going to have to undedicate that. Otherwise, I, I can't really see uh, a problem, in, a, a solution in the future different than what we've had for the last five years that I've been there, which is higher ed on the chopping block every single year. And that's not something that we can live with, and it's certainly not healthy for higher ed. Um, one of the problems with mid-year cuts they affect higher ed worse than other areas because most colleges, uh, they work on a yearly budget. Everybody works on a yearly budget, but they enter into contracts with professors and with groups for a year. And if you tell them you've got X number of dollars for a year and then you come through in December, halfway through the fiscal year and say, oh, by the way, we're going to take 20 percent of your funding. Well, if you're doing it midpoint, that's actually a 40 percent cut in the second half of the year. And that just absolutely doesn't work. So we're going to have to undedicate, unless, unless we come up with major new revenue streams, we're going to have to undedicate funding to other things to free it up to help protect higher ed. Um, the SAVE bill this year was the only time that I've been, since I've been there, that there was actually some dedicated higher ed funding. Uh, I don't really think that was the intent of the bill, but it actually, if you read it, it actually did dedicate so it required regions to give each university, I think, fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars for every student that enrolled. So that actually does dedicate some funding, although it was a goofy bill.